Good afternoon, Cloud Community, and welcome back to wonderful Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here midway through day two of three days of coverage here on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-conspirator, co-pilot, and co-host, Rob Streche. Wow, I get all three this time. I, you know, I'm trying to keep you on your toes. You, you are keeping me on my toes, I love it, I love it. <laughs> In these super comfy chairs, what else super, do you super, Yeah, super comfy. <laughs> uh, you and I mentioned that it's Friends and Family Day. It is. And I am really excited to introduce a family member and a new friend, Bobby and Gary. Thank you so much for yeah, being yeah. here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It, it's always a treat. And, and <laughs> Bobby and I have now done this a few times. And when he said he was bringing you on, Gary, the hype was real. So <laughs> nice. I hope you're ready to bring it. Uh, since the audience hasn't had a chance to meet you sure. before through us, give us a little bit of your background. You're a total technology baller. Break it down. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been around for a long time. So uh, I guess technology-wise, worked at a lot of companies, but I've done everything from uh, the mainframes to uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you, you know, uh, desktop computing to uh, the first RAMs of distributed computing. As I like to say, I used Java when it was called Java and J2EE. You know, it had like two E's back then. <laughs> oh, you oh, showing yeah. your stripes yeah, there? Yeah, I'm telling you. Right, yeah. I've been through, been through all those. You know, Sun was a company. With wow. work with servers, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, run the you know run the gamut all the way up to uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, everything, trading, everything. And then uh, built a bunch of stuff on you know got got hooked on containers in 2014, I think. Uh, I was at IBM at the time. I was going to say uh, that's yeah. kind of, that's early days. That, yeah, that's well, Kubernetes we to, inception days. Yeah, we were trying to build stuff, right? And we had like all these things to package Java VMs, you know, like different versions where like VMs were kind of heavy. Docker looked cool. Oh, um, we all remember those days. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, and we were building our own thing, and then Kubernetes came out, and I was like, oh, Kubernetes sounds good. Started working on that for a bunch of years, and then uh, you know, got the opportunity. Uh, Google called and said, hey, I you want to work here? I was just going to ask how you ended up on the GKE team. Yeah, Google, Google called, and they said, do you want to come? I said, sure, but, and then they, uh, they, but I only wanted to work on Kubernetes. Oh, I like that. And they happened to have some Kubernetes jobs, and uh, for good or bad, can't determine yet which, uh, they hired me and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that you are. I'm really curious, because that's a specific call out in general. You only want to work on Kubernetes projects. Tell me why. Uh, I guess I'm just a huge fan of, uh, I guess I'm an infrastructure guy, middleware guy, so I spent, as I said, on the Java side. But uh, I'm a big fan of distributed computing. Like it brings everything together, network, distributed computing, running apps and things like that. Kubernetes seemed to be the base thing that was going on, right? I'd spent five years managing tons of clusters, and uh, I mean, at the end, I guess I'll show, you know, Google's Google, right? It was the place that Kubernetes was born. I wanted to come see what it was like there. I wanted to try Borg, you know, the thing that it came from. And yeah. uh, it lived, I mean, I'm not just, yeah, I could, I won't, they'll fire me anyway, so I, I, I uh, it lived up to the hype, right? It was just like seeing what everything was like, seeing how it works, and, uh, but I really do think that like Kubernetes was a thing that was going to persist, right? It seemed like, it seemed like it was at the spot where Java was at one point where everybody decided they needed Java and an app server. I'm like, even 10 years in, it was like, it doesn't seem like saying that I'm going to use Kubernetes is not the wrong decision. Yeah. And I was like, so it made sense to stay, stay on that. And of course, I came to the place that it was born because that would be the most came fun. Came to the mothership. So yeah. can, can I jump in Savannah? He's being modest, right? So, <laughs> of course you can, so, Bobby. So, so sometimes in hip hop, they'll say your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. He's your favorite tech guy's favorite tech guy. So Aww. he's the guy, honestly, he's being super modest. But when the GK PMs have a question, they usually go to Gary, right? So he's that guy. So he's honestly, in my opinion, Gary's probably one of the widest and deepest product managers in all of Google Cloud. And uh, he's super modest about that, but if you want to have a question about Kubernetes or Cloud Run, this is the, the guy to talk to about I'm that. I'm glad you brought him to us today, That's Bobby. Nice. Uh, speaking, speaking of the Google Kubernetes engine, big evolution here. We're at the 10 year anniversary. Yes, yes. Where are y'all at these days? Lots of exciting things going on. Lots of big things. So if I was to give where we are a title, I would say the GK is growing up and glowing up. Right, so, Love me a glow up. so Gary's going to talk about the glow up, but I'm going to oh. talk about the glow up <laughs> thing. So, so what what are some of the things that we released recently that we might want to tell the audience about? I guess the uh, the big one uh, last night, and we have good stickers and shirts. I Come saw I Come, saw a, a six, six, a five, a and six a K. Five, on that. Yeah, so we just mm -hmm. announced uh, sixty five thousand nodes uh, support on GKE for like wow. the 
you know, super huge like training workloads, right? We had super huge is an understatement. Yeah, we had Nate. 15. That is right, epic. Right? Yeah, yeah. Then, we had 15k workloads. right before. Yeah, and then uh, now we're up to 65k. Yeah, and uh, as a call out, we did in open source. Uh, so on the on the on the G on our side, we're able to do that because of things like Spanner and other technologies. We can scale to massive clusters, but we did backport a lot of work into open source. So. Theoretically, somebody can run 30,000 on open source now too, mm -hmm. which is like, wow. Not, I'm not sure they could, you know. Technically, there's no holes to it, right? So that's just, I mean, think about it. You, we were at like 1,000, then 5,000 was big, right? 15,000 was massive, and now 15,000 15, more to than 65, that. I was just going to say that's a yeah. huge. Yeah. I think we're going, but that's huge. that's where. I mean, we'll try not to probably talk about too much Gen AI because it's everywhere. But that's yeah. that's where it's going, right? Uh, people need these massive clusters. Um, our internal stuff needs it, and like our top, uh, our top customers need it. So, yeah, the team did a lot of work. Uh, we got, they got T-shirts right out of it, right? You know, big announcements. But uh, it's been, I think, that's been years of work to go into that, right? To from everything from the back end and making the scale, and it was a lot of things that that kind of came together uh, to be able to make that happen. So, yeah, 65K is great. Congratulations! I mean, a huge <laughs> milestone, and the scale and scope it's of huge. that is no joke. When Bobby was telling me, and I saw the secretary, I was like, wait a minute. Last time we talked, this was 50,000 less. This is... I think the principle though, Savannah, is, and I want to I want to make sure we come get the people that are maybe not doing the Mac Daddy training jobs just yet. Yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. to be right. doing 65K. You just to be clear, be you, are, you are okay. a you're useful like, ally you're and tool regardless. not on the struggle regardless. bus yeah. if you're not doing 50,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, Everyone at home right now feeling like, a little small. You even no. live if you don't do 40,000. <laughs> yeah. but, but the principle is like, <laughs> we're solving the problems before you hit the barrier, right? Mm -hmm. So I call it headroom for innovation. Yeah. So before you, if, if you had an environment where we took the barriers off, we took the limits off, what could you do? That's what we're trying to do. So before you get there, we want to go ahead and break through that barrier so you can just be unleashed. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that to me definitely. Be Love that. Yeah, I mean it's it's huge because especially I mean I know you know Gen AI is everywhere and all of this, but the companies are really trying to go down that path and build it into their other applications as well. AI means so many different things to so many different people, it to does. your point. Yeah. Some, some people are like, hey, I'm happy using it via API, maybe I'm using one of yours exactly. via API, but they're, or they're looking to go and do an SLM, a small language yep. model or specific language model, mm -hmm. and build up their, you know, taking their corporate data mm -hmm. uh, that they hold dear to themselves and you know, fine tuning and training and putting guardrails on. How do you see what AI means to so many different people and how, how that's really going? So I'm going to answer your question in a little bit different way, right? So, so we talked a little bit about GK growing up, now about the glowing up, okay? So, <laughs> so I had a really weird situation in high school. I had almost like an ugly duckling experience. Did, didn't we all? <laughs> yeah, mine was like really, really extreme, right? So like first three years of high school, I was the kid with like the big glasses, Latin club, like I didn't have a whole lot of swagger, okay? And then I got contacts and car keys the senior year before my, before my senior year that summer. Homecoming king, best dress, most likely to succeed all of my senior year. I came back to school and folks were like, have you seen the new kid? They were like, Bobby, the kid who's <laughs> already been here. So here's my analogy. Hi -o. Gen, Gen AI is the contacts and car keys for Kubernetes. So it's kind of putting a different spin. So people that are like, is this the new kid? No, no, this is the kid that's been here for mm -hmm. 10 years. And so the glow up kind of was a different cosmetic packaging, but there was a lot of substance there. I think that's what we're seeing. You know, I think I think it's a great point, and I love that analogy when we brought it up on Bobby D's podcast the other day. <laughs> I, I I think there's a lot there, though. We, we we, Kubernetes adoption, as you and I have personally talked about, is not quite at the level of saturation that I think sometimes people perceive it to be. Right, We're still right. only seeing 20%-ish, maybe 25% if we're being generous at, at enterprise at scale. People obviously playing with that in a sandbox or new deployments. But truly at scale, it's still taking time. I really do feel like Gen AI and AI has put the, you know, the jet pack behind that, yes. or that cart to really yes. launch Kubernetes as the platform for anything you're building new, which at this point, and for a lot of people's cases, is AI yeah. at least Minded. Not that yes. everything has to be AI, but building those systems. Right. It's not just that, though, that y'all announced today. It's not just the 65,000 nodes. Bobby, I know you got some highlights for me. You got some self-service, you got some Argo CD. We do, we do. So um, one of the things, again, AI is one of the kind of the shiny object that people look at, but we're also trying to give people tools to operate better. So self-service is a big thing. So we've produced some really good assets this week that sometimes get drowned out by the big announcements like the 65,000 nodes, but like, yep. if you have multi-clusters and want to have self-service, we would do some really cool stuff or introduce some really cool things. 
fleets, teams, Argo CD. So like, how do you allow your developers to have more self-service and capabilities based on top of Kubernetes? We produce some really cool stuff around security, right, DNS access to the control plane. We got a great customer story around a customer who actually experienced the trifecta, right? Better performance, lower latency, and lower cost because of some things we wrote out, C4 VMs, uh, custom compute classes, right, kind of our way to, uh, for lack of a better term, I guess, our alternative to Carpenter, right? With some, so, yeah. some other stuff thrown in there. Similar capabilities in a different packaging. Our flavor on it. <laughs> what else, I'm, I'm missing something. What, what else have we done this week that I'm missing? Um, uh, those are the big ones, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I mean there's a lot, there was a few like internal things. I mean, it's funny, right? Like, there's always the big announcements that are in there, right? And then, but to your point, I think on like, you know, where we are in Kubernetes, sometimes it's like, there's just like simple things that you have to do as sort of like, you know, housekeeping and whatever, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, as a side thing, just to call out, it was great to see the awards this morning uh, for the folks who did a lot of work on cleaning up like yeah. the Kubernetes stuff and whatever, Absolutely. it wasn't the new features and whatever, so it's great yeah. to see them. Yeah. And it's great to see us do that. Like we did a, a, our own little container event the other day, and I, you know, I just ad-libbed it at the end. I was like, hey, here's like, you know, five cool things that you should know about, right? And, I think they wouldn't necessarily be the coolest things to the audience, but they're simple things. Like, how do you simplify I, networking? Everybody hates networking. Yes. And you know, Kubernetes. It's Kubernetes is unforgiving if you screw up networking. Like, if you right, that you, is a good you call give, out. You, you know, you give it too small of a subnet, yeah. and that then you're like, that web gets yeah. too yeah, crunchy, like, and you yeah. can't you can't yeah. change stuff, right? But now no. we're making all that stuff flexible. Part of it in open source, part of it in GKE, and you're like. You kind of, I was talking to our director of engineering and he's like, his favorite part was like, I'm like, what, you didn't like my great thing on our new auto scaling and everything? He's like, well that's good, Gary, but he's like, I liked how people smiled when we said, you remember how you used to have to do X and now that's no longer a problem and the friction's gone? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, the great thing about where we are with sort of Kubernetes, right? Advancing and also like, you know, mapping to like some of these like core sort of enterprise problems. Mm -hmm. And as I tell people sometimes, I'm like, hey, Now's a great time to pick Kubernetes. You know, we spent the last 10 years fixing all the problems that you might have had. Yep. So we have all the answers now. So go ahead and uh, you know, get going. But I think the other, other thing that with the AI, just as a quick, I don't know, it's non sequitur, but. Um, We're here for all of it, normally, Gary. You know, normally how like a new thing comes out and there'll be like a new platform. Yeah. And I think like the amazing thing about Kubernetes is that people could say, well maybe it wasn't specific enough, specific enough, you can run anything on it, right? Mm -hmm. Well. There's been a few things that tried to say, maybe we should do Gen AI and AI this way, right? And then, in the end, even all the frameworks that tried to build their own runtimes are all, mm -hmm. now we've got you know, Ray on Kubernetes, Kube Ray yeah. and all this. Right. You've got things like DRA coming, right, for dynamic resource allocation for GPUs. And you're like, wait a second. So Kubernetes, the same thing that I haven't gotten to yet, maybe for my workloads, but want to get to, is also the same platform that I can use to scale out my Gen AI workloads. Yep. So this is great, right? Now it's not this thing like a miss out or pass out on technology, right? So to me that's, I give all credit to like the folks who designed Kubernetes as being highly pluggable and flexible, yeah. and I think they really like proved it out, but it's like, yeah, so like you said, I want to do Gen AI, but it's now it's still the same platform yeah. that I can modernize my apps to, right? Which is, you don't have to skip a generation or technology, no confusion. Yeah. Like, pick Kubernetes and you're okay, right? Yeah. And it can grow and adapt with you, whatever yeah. you're deploying, whatever exactly. you're building. I, I do think it's really been this, this kind of match made in tech heaven vibe between Kubernetes and everything that's going on with AI. And it's also, and I'm curious, confirm or deny this, this is my hunch as an, well not an outsider, <laughs> but as a, as a journalist on this side, is, is I really do feel like it has accelerated the conversation from a strategy perspective yes. with companies across verticals, not yes. just in our world or in specific little niches who happen to have been on the Kubernetes bandwagon. Yes. But you're, so you're seeing that as well, because they're all coming to you, I would imagine. They are coming so, to us, yes. Yeah. Uh, it, ha, has any of those conversations uh, been surprising or fascinating from a customer perspective that you can share, obviously? I mean, I think part of what's surprising is I think people are willing to be a little bit more vulnerable now, that like, I really don't know what we want. And I think that sometimes, again, Gary and I's team is really big on customer empathy and trying to meet people where they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're finding that sometimes folks are still forming the question. So we can't just rush to the answer because we have to help them like figure out like, we can cook something, but what do you want for dinner? We might have to give you some appetizers so you can taste us a few things. But I think we're also seeing that you can't revolutionize everything that you've got, so I got to bring a little Greek in here, okay? English is like super word poor, and we use adjectives a lot, like what kind of table, what kind of chair. They're two different kinds of new and Greek, and I'm going somewhere with this, right? 
So there's Neos and there's Kanos, right? One is new like a new pair of sneakers, and one is new like a jetpack. And I think where a lot of customers are struggling is, do I need sneakers or do I need jetpacks? You probably need both. I was going to say, I want both. You need both. <laughs> you know I love sneakers. But, but I, think, I think sometimes, Savannah, sometimes we're mixing the two up. So if you're going to Thanksgiving dinner later this month, you don't want grandma to totally redo that macaroni and cheese. You want her to do it again like a new pair of sneakers. Yeah. You don't want her to reimagine macaroni and cheese. Now maybe do skim milk instead of like whole a milk. truffle cheese on top right, right. or something, give it a little Cut extra. Cut the fat a little bit yeah. so we don't have to spend as much time on a treadmill, but the reality is you want her to do it again, not do something brand new. But there are other things you do want to do brand new, and so what kind of new are we talking about is a conversation we do need to have like, this stuff needs to run better, right? Like Gary talked about optimization, performance, latency, but then we want to do something like amazing over here. Like how do we balance those two things? Well, and that's where you come in to help them navigate yeah. that. Hopefully, Definitely. we don't we don't have all the, well he, he's got all the answers. <laughs> I just work with smart well, people like him. We're helping so. people learn how to think though and ask the right questions because we are, I mean it sounds silly, well you're actually IBM, the, the think differently side of what, where we, I, I didn't mean to throw that pun in there, that just came out organically. <laughs> but, 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 but I do think we're really at a, sometimes I surprise even myself, I, but I do think we're at an intersection here where to your exact point, that vulnerability and, and that curiosity is, is it, it's, we're not in this kind of linear growth and scale, we're at like this wild yeah. Yeah. point where it's like, whoa, I want to make sure my sneakers are on yeah. too when I put the jetpack right. on, yes. you know, I don't want to be barefoot in outer space. There's yeah. it. Exactly. Right. But I also think you hit on a really good thing is that people want simplicity, and I know you have yes. Run, that is the more simple version of Kubernetes, yeah. but it's built on all the technology that's under the hood, and that has to be like you were saying, the networking thing, having been at a, a separate hyperscaler, yeah. I can tell you networking was the bane of my existence yes. with anything I did at that hyperscaler. And so I, it, that has to be a lot of what people come to you and say, hey, we can give you run, this is where you can start to cut your teeth, start to do things with some of the other Linux Foundation stuff like PyTorch and mm -hmm. other things and bring in that AI there and get used to that. And then when you're re really looking to scale, you can go to GKE and really get that going. Is that where the yeah. kind of patterns you're starting to see? Yes. I, think we see I, de I think we definitely see that. We even see people going sort of both ways, right? I mean, on the pure container side, right? So of course there's going to be people who are, I mean, I think the magic of Kubernetes that it did, all the other things we said that it lived up to is portability, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, everybody, whether or not you really are going to go to multiple clouds or not, or on-prem, right? It's proven that, yes, you have to move the workloads or whatever, but like from an API perspective, your stuff is still compatible. Sure, maybe storage and move stuff there's around. Some little bit, but, like, but yeah. people feel like that's the sort of common denominator. So there's always going to be some who are just going to be like, I'm not going to like move away from that. But then I think as you, but then there's some like, look, I just want to get to here. I'm kind of either all in. I need to quickly develop things. And I think you know, cloud, cloud run, for example, you know, is a great example of, of that. Um, we were talking about announcements. I think one cool thing that we did was we combined cloud run and cloud functions. Mm -hmm. mm. Guess nice. what we called it? Cloud run functions. <laughs> yeah. Sophisticated, Sophisticated on the marketing. <laughs> but at least, you know, this is one of those times. It's all about decreasing there. complexity, Gary. Yeah. That's what we're all about. Exactly. Well, 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 at least it says what it does. I mean, at least it says what it does. I mean, naming, yeah. like, oh people like, what is in your portfolio, Don't even right? get me started exactly. on this but one. And the spelling sometimes, y'all. Yeah, yeah. exactly. but, but, the, but the thing is, right, so it's like, you want to pro if you want to focus on a functional programming model, you can. Yep. But then if you needed to tweak something, you can, mm -hmm. right? And even if you started with a functional programming model, you could technically mm -hmm. deploy that on Cloud Run mm -hmm. as a function, even on GKE, right? Because it's the same sort of portable artifact. So I think like, you know, we start to see that, you know, moving back and forth. The other thing you were mentioning about, the interesting thing in the AI conversations is the, I guess it's not surprising, but sort of to Bobby's point of like the sneakers and the jetpack, it's like we have, some of the craziest, not craziest, but craziest requirements from customers, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, one time you're, you know, you're getting in and talking about, you know, what's the right thing to do on this model, low level networking, RDMA, InfiniBand, like blah, 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 how do I, whatever, right? Loading, like, and then on the other side, it's, well, I just want to serve this, like how do I, you know, so, and I know that like Kubernetes is the right thing, I, like, I, you know, maybe we'll try like, you know, a vertex or whatever that's in there, but I'm already using it. Mm -hmm. Like, how would I do it over here? But I, do, I don't want to see it, yeah. but I want to be able to like have a sort of customization and configure it. Yeah. So it's sort of like, you know, these like, sort of these two extremes. And we were with another guy on our team yesterday, 
and like he's like, who, wait, who are we talking to today, Gary? I have to get like in the right like you know <laughs> mindset before I start like spitting out acronym soup like VLM, TG. I mean, there, you know, every, there's acronyms everywhere, right? Yeah. But I think that's the that's the uh, that's been the interesting side is that sort of like you know balance that um, that uh, super super high tech and then like hey, we just want we know this is the way you want it. We want simplicity. Yeah. Can you just make this easier and uh, like you know how to do it? So I think it's kind of a yeah. Maybe, maybe someday we'll get to the middle. I think what we're seeing <laughs> is I, I think the, the products have range. Kubernetes has a lot of range, to Gary's point, but the customers have a lot of range. Yeah. So Very you need to so. really think about like what is the problem that the customer's trying to solve, and they're at different parts of their journey. You can have the same problem and you, like you just want the answer, you're still trying to validate the question in some other cases. So we got to listen. Yes. We got to leave our preconceived notions at the door and just make sure that we're listening a lot more than we're talking. You know, could you say that louder for all the people in the back, just in the world? Because that would, I think we would have a much calmer planet in a lot we of would. different ways if we all, just did a little more listening. Just a little bit. All right, this has flown by, quite frankly, and I, and I knew that it would. I have one final question for you both. You know where I'm going with this, Bobby, so I'm going, I, I'm going to give it to you first, so Gary has a second, since, okay. since we're break, since he's getting used to this fun yeah. ride we put him on here on theCUBE. Uh -huh. When we're in London, at the next KubeCon, what do you hope to be able to say then that you cannot say now? What do I hope to be able to say then that we can't say now? I hope to be able to say, so, so back to what, 50% or so of the people here are here for the first time. I hope to be able to say that we gave people on ramps who were not in the community for years already. Like we made room on the platform for people that are the newbies, right? On ramps for the customers, the contributors, that that's what, what I hope we did. And then I got to give you one Bobbyism before we go. Please. Which is, I believe, everybody wants the blessing, nobody wants the assignment. We all want the benefits of Kubernetes, but what Google's trying to do is we're giving the builders the building blocks before they need them, <coughs> so we can take off the limits so you can do something amazing. You always bought it. You know, I, we got to get as many Bobbyisms in every segment. I hope you bring a few more to our 3.30 later you. today as well. Gary, what about you? What do you hope to be able to say? I'm going to go on the pure tech side just for, just for fun. You know, I mean, somebody should be able to use it, but I guess I'll hint towards it is we've talked about scaling things up in terms of size. I really want to talk about scaling things up in terms of speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. baby. Ooh. I guess I'll sort of leave it at Ooh. that, but uh, we're making a lot of investments in those area, and mm -hmm. it's not what I want to actually like tell you, it's what I want to show you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, is that, oh, you know, Speaking a, my language all around I'm here, a, gentlemen. I'm, I'm a YOLO, like I get up <laughs> there, like live, 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 live demo, like share something fast. Yep. So that's, uh, that's hopefully, and I guess we'll uh, be able to talk next year. Uh, Kubernetes turned 10 this year, mm -hmm. GKE turns 10 next year. Mm -hmm. So we'll be throwing a birthday party in yeah, London. Of course. Yes, and yes. doing a speed demo, which yes. I very yes. much look forward to. Yeah. And I'm going to be thinking about glow ups for the rest <laughs> of the day. I think mine go. was probably when I got my braces that was off. Good. I think that was the, <laughs> I think that was the light switch for for Savannah as an on camera personality versus ah, yeah. a nice. face that was made for radio. Uh, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> Bobby and Gary, one. you are absolutely fabulous duo. I see exactly why you wanted to bring Gary. You did okay. not disappoint. He was uh, not overhyping you. This was a blast. Thanks for taking the time. And congrats again on 65k. Thank you. Maybe we can be doing 10 years, 100k next year. It's going to yeah. be a whole lot of fun for the cube. In 100 years we won't know how we won't talk about the number of nodes it'll just happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, it'll 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 already be taken no care limits. of. I love that. No limits is right, baby. That's no definitely limits. a part of the attitude. <laughs> love it. Speaking of thanks for you always having no limits to my terrible jokes on the show. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, th I think you're getting better. <laughs> We're all good. Okay. Thanks. That's quite the comment. <laughs> and I hope all of you are putting up with my cheeky sense of humor and our fabulous guests and their amazing insights here in Salt Lake City, Utah, day 2 of KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. <laughs>